What up, folks? I got something to say. Well, really, I don't have a lot to say about this particular topic today. I'm going to bring somebody in who's more proficient and understands the topic a little more than I do. Uh, I've been engaged in a lot of political discussion lately. I've been watching a lot of the debates, and I think it's very interesting, especially from a Christian, on how we are to engage the, the political arena. I'm going to bring in a brother who's an aficionado in this area, a good brother of mine, Justin Gibney, who is the founder of Crucifix and Politics. What up, sir? Oh, man. Hey. Good. What's going on? Good. Chilling. Chilling. Let me get this mic real quick. All right. So first of all, why should I care about politics as a Christian? You know, it's funny how often I get that question. Before I even get into the four reasons, I guess it's important to say that it's more than just voting. Um, a lot of people think, well, why should I even vote? Because my vote doesn't matter. But that should be a given. Voting should be something that you do automatically. But really being in politics is a lot more than just voting. Um, and there's and so I'll give you four reasons why Christians should be socially and politically involved. So the first reason why I think Christians should be socially and politically involved is because we're disciples. And just like uh, Apostle Paul in Acts 17, you see that he engaged people because he, he knew he was supposed to be part of the larger public discourse. So we should be engaged in politics because we should be applying our beliefs to the issues of the day to make it relevant. Uh, we should be advocating for our beliefs. And when the situation arises, I think we should be willing and we should be prepared to defend those beliefs in the public square and do it, do it in a civil manner. A second reason is because for better or worse, and whether we like it or not, politics uh, impacts every aspect of society. Whether we're talking about the arts, uh, whether we're talking about how we take care of the least of these, or even national security, um, that's all touched by politics. And these are very serious issues with real human consequences. That means people are really affected by these things on a daily basis. And if we know anything about history, history has told us over and over again that when we turn a blind eye or when we refuse to engage effectively, that a bad situation can get worse. And so it's not that we can prevent every atrocity, but sometimes it's a matter of degree. And if we step in, we can save a life or two or we can turn somebody towards um, human flourishing. And that's really what, what it's all about. If we can save one life, then it was worth it. Number three, I'm gonna state kind of in the negative, and that is uh, we're not here to impose some sort of theocracy. We shouldn't engage to tell people or co coerce people to follow our beliefs just because we said so. Um, anytime we enter the public sphere, we should be thinking about the common good. We should be thinking about common purpose. Um, and so when we enter the discussion, we should be reasoning with people just like Apostle Paul did. We should be reasoning with people to persuade them, not to coerce them, to persuade them that our beliefs and the way we see things is the best way to go. We should be articulating our beliefs into policy. And in fact, if we can't articulate our, our ideas into policy that's for the common good, then we shouldn't expect anybody to listen. Fourth, and this is very important, um, the political system is in desperate need of people who can put principle before partisanship, of people who can put principle before political ideology. There are some very well many people in politics that have allowed their political affiliation to become religious in nature, that have allowed their political affiliation to become hyper-partisan to the point where they will defend their party even when they know their party's doing wrong. They'll defend their party even when their party is pursuing uh, bad policy. You preaching right now is one that you know. And it's real. I mean, I see that every day because the parties like to force you into hyperpartisanship. It makes their job easier. But I think as Christians, as people who can never just be about a party platform, can never just be about a party agenda, we're in a good place to have the fortitude on whatever side we're on to say, hey, we may agree on some issues as a party, but when you're wrong and when you're pursuing policy that isn't for the common good, I'm going to stand up and say something regardless of what effect it might have on me or the party. I'm seeking something bigger than our party's agenda. Politics should never be practiced for its own sake. It should never be disconnected from the fullness of Christian life. Um, when that happens, it becomes very empty and it becomes ultimately corrupted. 
And the church has seen that happen before not so long ago. Uh, it should never just be about the accumulation of power. It's really about uh, finding influence to spread the good news. And that's it. All right. So before we break out, give the people one or two resources, books or whatnot that can help them um, become more politically savvy to engage in this conversation. Sure. And honestly, I wish I could say there were a lot more than just a couple resources, but there aren't very many. And that's one of the reasons that we need more engagement from Christians on this issue. The first one I would point to, though, would probably be the Lamb's Agenda by um, Reverend Sam Rodriguez. A very good book on how we can break out of the party mindset and just be focused on discipleship. The other one I would point out is City of Man by uh, Michael Gerson and Peter Weiner. Uh, which just talks about engagement of Christians on a serious political level. So I think those are two good ones. They they have a good start and they can get you towards where you need to be. But we need more resources to lay it out for people, create a framework and also to create a platform so we know how to move forward. And then we're just going to wait for you to write your book. What? This is Shobaraka and my man, Jessica Gibney. We got something to say.